Hello! In this video, we're going to go over how to create a stealth backstab system. So games like Dark Souls and Elden Ring have this. When you sneak up behind an enemy and they've not noticed you, you can do a backstab on them, which will basically perform a lot of damage on the enemy and kill them. Before we get started, if you'd like to learn how to combine this system with a melee combat system where the player character can parry enemies, attack them, do combos and a lot more, make sure to check out my Souls-like melee combat system course. You can get a link to it in the description of the video. With that said, let's get into it. So, to get started creating this system, if we just go over to the Blueprints folder, and we're going to create something called a Blueprint Interface, which basically allows it so different blueprints can communicate with each other. So, to create one, we can just right-click, select a Blueprint, then select Blueprint Interface, and I'm just going to call this my BP underscore Backstab. Then I'm just going to open it up, and go over to Functions, add a new function, and just call this Perform backstab and then create another um, function and just call this can backstab for the can backstab function just go to outputs and add a pin and just call this can backstab compile and save this the next thing I'm going to do is basically create an enemy which the player character can backstab if you already have an enemy that's fine I'm just going to create one now so I'm just going to right click select blueprint class Select a character, I'll call this my BP underscore enemy. I will open them up, go up to mesh, and I'm just going to make them the SK Manny. I will move them down and just go to select and rotate and rotate it so he's facing this arrow. And for the animation class, I'm going to make it the animation blueprint Manny. Then we just want to go up to class settings, go up to um, implemented interfaces, and go add. And look for the BP underscore backstab that we just made. Then just compile this. And if we go to interfaces here, we should see the two functions that we made in our um, backstab interface. So the can backstab. So here, if you already have an AI, you can basically um, write the conditions that you want to be true in order for the player character to be able to perform a backstab. But for now, I'm just going to make sure that this is checked. This will basically mean my player character can backstab this enemy at any time. We just want to compile this, and that's all we're going to do for now. The next thing we're going to do is basically um, code what button we want our player character to press in order to do a backstab. So if we just go to the input folder, and I'm going to go to my actions, right click, and go to input, select input action, and I'm just going to call this input action underscore attack, because your player character is probably going to use the attack button in order to backstab. Next, we just want to go to the IMC default, and we just want to add a new mapping. Select here and select your input action underscore attack. Then if you just select um, this button here, then select with your left mouse button, that'll basically make it so um, when the player character presses the left mouse button, they're going to perform the input action underscore attack. Clicking here and then selecting the key is a quicker way of um, assigning keys to input actions. We can save this, close this, and then we just want to go over to our third person character, find some free space, and just right click and look for the input action underscore attack and just expand this when our player character basically presses the left mouse button this starter node is going to fire and we're basically going to check to see if the player character can perform a backstab and if they can we're going to make them do one so if we just go over to our functions and just call this perform backstab when we run this function the first thing we're going to do is just drag a sphere and look for sphere trace for objects. Where this is going to start, we can just right click and look for get actor location and connect this into start. Where this will end, we can just right click and look for get actor rotation. So we'll get the rotation of our um, actor. Then we just want to get the forward direction of it. So if we look for get forward vector. And then we just want to drag off here and look for multiply. Right click here and change this to be a float. And then you can play around with this value, but I think 100 works well. And then we're basically going to be checking 100 units in front of our player character. So we just want to drag off here and look for add. Connect from here into here, here into here, and connect this into end. So we're going to start a sphere trace where our player character is, and we're going to end it 100 units in front of them. Okay, for the radius of this sphere trace, just make it 20. And for the object types, drag off here and look for make array. Select here and select pawn. So in Unreal Engine, characters normally use the pawn collision. 
So we're going to be checking for object types which have pawn collisions. Because um, this is a character blueprint. And like I said, character blueprints normally use the pawn collision. If you just like this capsule component and scroll down, um, we can see this is a pawn collision. So that's what we're going to be looking for. For access to ignore, we just want to drag up here and look for make array. Drag up here and look for self. We don't want our player character to be able to basically um, accidentally hit themselves with this sphere trace. For the draw debug, just make this full duration so you can see it. And then we just want to drag off this return value and have a branch. If our player character successfully hits something with the sphere trace, this branch is going to be true. If we do, we just want to drag off this out hit. This will basically get all the information about the actor that we hit with our sphere trace. And we want to look for break hit result, expand it, and we want to get the actor that we hit with our sphere trace. So we just want to drag our hit actor and look for promote to local variable and call this L underscore hit actor. So we're basically going to store a reference to the actor that our player character hit with their uh, sphere trace, connect from here into here. After we've done this, we want to see if we can perform a backstab on this enemy. So if we just drag off here and look for can backstab, and we want to check that this is true. So if we just drag off here and look for branch, and if this is true, then we're going to allow our player character to perform a backstab on this enemy. When we perform a backstab on an enemy, we want our player character to smoothly move towards um, the actor that we're trying to backstab. So to do that, if we just go back to our event graph, right click and look for add custom event, and just call this move to target. We want to go over to input and just add an input and just call this target. For the variable, change this to be an actor and select an object reference. Then we just want to drag up here and look for move component two. And we're going to be moving our player character's capsule component to um, our target that we're trying to backstab. So if we just drag in capsule component, connect this into here. Where we're going to be moving it to, if we just drag up here and look for get actor location. And then we also just want to um, double click to add a react node, drag up here and get the actor's forward vector. And we just want to drag up here and look for multiply. Right click and change this to be a float. You may need to play around with this value, but I found around 70 works pretty well. I'll just explain what all of this does in a second. And we just want to drag up here and look for subtract. Connect from here to here and connect this into target relative um, location. So this will basically determine the position of where a player character will be when they do the backstab. This value will basically control how forwards or um, behind our player character would be when they do this animation. That's why you may need to change this depending on the animation that you have. When we set up the animation, I'll also go back here again, just so you can see what I mean. For the rotation, we can just drag up here and look for get actor, and look for get actor rotation. And just connect this into here. That's all we need to do here. We can compile this, then go back to our perform backstab and then if we can backstab the hit actor, we just want to drag up here and look for the move to target. The target is going to be um, the L hit actor. Get it and just connect from here to here. And actually, there is one more check we want to do before our player character um, starts moving towards the backstab actor. Just in case you have more functions in your game. If your player character is ever playing an animation montage, we don't want them to be able to perform a backstab. So we're going to check to see that our player character is not doing any animation montages in order for them to do a backstab. So if we just drag off here and have another branch, we just want to drag in the mesh, drag off here, and look for get anim instance. And then we just want to drag off here and look for montage play. And then just look for is montage playing. And we want this one, montage is playing. and just connect from here into here. Right click here and break the link. If our player character is currently playing a different animation montage, we don't want them to be able to perform a backstab. However, if this is false, then we're gonna make our player move towards their target. And then we are just gonna drag up here and we'll play anim montage. And then we're gonna make our player character play an animation of them doing a backstab. I'm just gonna close this go over to my animations folder. I'll provide a link to some free backstab animations that you can find somewhere in the description of this video.
you just want to import them into your project and then select SK Mannequin called Scanton, go import all, or you can use different backstab animations which you can find on the Unreal Engine Marketplace. Select both of the animations, right click and go create and create an animation montage. Then you just want to open up both animations and enable root motion on both of these animations. This will make it so the animation will drive the movement of a character when it plays these animations. Save this, then just go back to your third person character. And after our player character has moved towards their target, we're just going to play their backstab animation. So find the animation of your player character performing their backstab. Then you just want to drag in the LH actor, get it, and then just drag off here and look for the perform backstab message, connect from here to here, and then just go back to your BP enemy and select the perform backstab. When we perform the backstab, you just want to drag off here and it will play anim montage and then play the animation of your enemy dying. If you have um, more logic to your enemy, you may also want to just make sure the enemy dies here. But for now, this is just a simple enemy, so we're just gonna play this animation when the enemy dies. We just wanna compile this, go back to our third person character, and then after we successfully perform a backstab, we just wanna drag off here and look for the return node. And just select outputs, and just call this backstab successful. Change this to be a boolean, and if we get to this point, we just want to make sure it's checked. Copy this, and then paste this again here. If the player character was playing an animation before they could do the backstab, then we just want to make sure that this unchecked, the backstab was not successful. We also want to copy this again, paste it here, and connect this into here. And we also want to paste this again here. Okay, compile this, then go back to the event graph. When the player character um, attacks, we're first going to check to see if they can perform a backstab. Connect from here to here. And then if say your player character also has a normal attacking system, if the backstab was unsuccessful, so we can just have a branch, then you could just make them attack. However, if the backstab was successful, then you don't need to do anything. Just going to delete that. Let's compile this and test this out. So I'll just drag in my enemy, play my game, and if I go up behind them, we can see I perform my um, backstab animation. You can see the line trace, it went green because um, I basically hit this actor. Although you may notice, after the animation played, the actor got back up. That's very easy to fix. If you just go over to your backstab animation of the um, enemy, the reason that happens is we just want to go to blend out time and make this zero. And you also just want to uncheck enable auto blend out I'll basically make it so when it gets to the end of this animation, the um, it won't go back to its normal animation system. So now if I play my game and I go behind this enemy, I perform the backstab. And then just to show you what I meant earlier, if I just go over to my um, third person character, let's say you had a different animation, you may need to play around with this value. So if I make this 120 and I go play and I go here, we can see the player character is a lot further behind. So you may need to just, like adjust this animation. So if this was like um, 90, that may be a bit better. But the higher we make this value, the further away the player character is going to be when they do this animation. So I think 90 works pretty well for this animation. Maybe 85 would be a bit better. But basically, you can basically use this value to determine how far or close you want to your player character to be when they do this animation. Okay, and then just to polish this up, if you go back to your third person character, and go to the perform backstab and make sure that this is set to none. That way it removes the trace. I've also gone ahead and just added a sword model to my player character's hand. That way it looks a bit nicer. And now when I play my game, when I get behind the enemy, I do the backstab and it looks all nice. If you want to add some more polish to it, what you can do is you can go over to the animation. So let's go over to the stealth kill victim. And in the point, and at the point in the animation where the enemy stabbed, what you can do is go over to notice go over to track and you can add notify track then just right click and go add notify and you can play certain sound effects or particle effects so let's say you have a blood particle effect you can basically select it here and then you can specify where you want it to basically appear and then at that point in the animation notify that blood particle effect or sound effect will appear okay so that's all for this video and if you'd like to learn how to combine the system with a parry and riposte system a enemy AI system so the enemy can also move around and attack the player, a combo system and a lot more, 
make sure to check out my Souls Like Melee Combat series. You can find a link to it attached in the description of this video. If you enjoyed, make sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!